think my question is for all of you, basically. It's the same thing in all the countries. So what's, what's the reaction of the people in the country when, I don't know, there isn't it a news that a mass grave has been found, so I don't know, in Colombia or in Pakistan, what the people from Pakistan say? Do they know? Or do they not know, or they don't care, or I don't know if you can brief them. Yeah, I can answer, say like in Sri Lanka, especially started nearly, uh, I said from 1976, first of all, it started. The beginning of these um, disappearances, it was just like one or two missing, and they found dead, or somebody don't know where they went, just vanished. Then the, uh, the systemized uh, this disappearance increased. Now, in 2009, what happened was everybody knows, even the satellite imageries from the um, thing, they know what happened. The people, they asked to gather in one place, they call it the safe zone. It's uh, the height of the fighting between uh, the freedom fighters of uh, Tamil, the, the Liberation Tigers of Tamil Ela, and the Sri Lankan forces. The public, they ask the public, they announce the public to go into some places like temples, or they created some zone as safe zones. So they are asked to gather them. So the thousands of um, civilians went into that place, they bombed the place. Through aerial um, uh, shellings and bombed by the fighter jets or planes or helicopters, whatever is available to the Air Force. So the public knows about it. The mother lost their children. They couldn't take them with them because they, they need to run for their life. They need to run for their life, the body is behind. They need to pass the bodies all over the place. The body is scattered all over the area. They couldn't go back, they couldn't turn back. So they need to run for their life. Some went on missing in that period. And what happened after all the crowd, this thousands of thousands of people died. You won't believe it. It's like a, uh, um, the American cinema. You can see the bodies all over the area. Um, unfortunately, I didn't bring any videos or photos with us, but we have enormous evidence of that. The forces comes after that with big bulldozers. They dug up big mass graves and put all the bodies in there, very now. It was guard. The whole area was guard. Nobody can go in, no international media, no civilians. What happened? All the world knows. Every single country in this world knows about that. But they don't want to come out and speak because of this globalized international politics. So that's in our country situation. It's not like that because of the Sri Lankan forces, the Sri Lankan government. It start with the the hide and seek killings. You know, they take somebody with plain clothes and they didn't know who they are. They took them out, killed. Sometimes they put it outside on a road or, or in a paddy field. Sometimes they miss. They take them to the sea and uh, buried in their sea burial. Recently, you heard about that scenario. So it happens there as well. But now, they have openly did this. The whole world looked at it. Nothing happens. It's two years past now. <coughs> Completely massacred. That's our story. Well, as for uh, groups, and there's a total media blackout. The international media, the reporters are not allowed. Politics that is sort of, they've made it a no-go area for the international people. Nobody can go in there. And as you were saying, well, the people of Pakistan, 
even they don't know what's happening in Baluchistan. Even they are kept in dark. Recently, I was watching a documentary on BBC, BBC Urdu. They had asked university students in Pakistan's big cities, do you know where Baluchistan is? They said, we don't know where is Baluchistan. They were asked about the names of cities of Baluchistan. They couldn't answer because they didn't know what's happening. Now, some of them, I believe they, they were silent deliberately. If you ask them where is Sui, Sui is because where the gas was found. They will immediately tell you where Sui is because the gas was discovered in Sui and it is fighting everywhere in Pakistan, in their industrial areas and their um, workplaces and everything. So they know where Sui is because the gas is there. If you ask them about Gawadar, they know where Gawadar is because there's a big port they are building and Pakistan wants to benefit from that port. But the other cities and rural areas, they don't know and they don't know what's happening. So our people have been trying to tell even the Pakistanis to make them aware. They have been to Islamabad, they protested the families of missing persons, their relatives, their brothers and sisters. They went in Islamabad, the capital of Pakistan, to protest. Basically not to ask Pakistan to come and help us, but to tell them what is happening. To make their point that we are telling everybody what is happening with us, but nobody is raising a voice. So people are trying to raise awareness, but the state media, the state uh, intelligence agencies, the army is trying to suppress the voice of people. So it's basically the same kind of situation everywhere, where the state and its media and its uh, machinery is trying to suppress the voices of occupied and oppressed nations. Yeah, I'm not just saying it's similar, but what's really fascinating to me is that the Saturday brothers, for instance, uh, the, uh, in, yeah, yeah, continuously struggling. And then there's not one single individual. I mean, surely there must be some people. But wouldn't you be interested to go and ask these people, why are you here every week? It's just that, uh, this is just unbelievable to me that, you know, not, 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 I mean, there's no uh, reaction from ordinary people. As if these things are not happening. That's why I started with the empathy. You know, I, I think there is a huge lack of empathy that we don't realize until that hits us. We don't realize what it means to be that we, you know, losing loved ones. And that's, that's the major problem. Surely the state have a role within that, with its media, with its like, ideological tools, and you know, the state apparatuses, etc. But there is nothing, I mean, it, it shouldn't prevent people to go and ask, like, what is your problem? I mean, what's your, I mean, 60 years old mother, every single week, is that, I mean, as a, as a human being, you know, you, sh you can be curious and just go ask, okay, what's your problem? And there's nothing like that. Internally, I mean, let alone, we just talk about international media, etc. Um, in relation to mass violence, just recently, um, that silence of the media, there's not, not a single word about it. It's like, in, imagine in London, that in, in, in Hackney, there's a, a mass grave. Uh, like bodies are coming out, there's some in uh, Islington, there's some in uh, Kensington, and people just uh, carry on their lives uh, as if there's nothing wrong with it. It's, it's, it's shocking. And, and that, that's when uh, you kind of question the, the meaning of humanity, the meaning of, of, of life. And yeah, so that's, that's pretty much it. Yeah, issue with, with the idea of here, nothing ever happens. Yes, kind of. So, what I would like to say very quickly is like, there are like three equally damaging responses. I might be unfair, but this is my feeling. One, it's um, uh, uh, trivialization of evil. So, it becomes frivolity. It's just frivolity everywhere. No reaction at all. And, and, and also you see a categorization of uh, first class and second class citizens. So you see a massive reaction of the citizens when certain kind of people suffer damage. But then thousands of others receive the same kind of treatment, torture, or they were uh, subjected to a strategic killing. But because they are second, -hand, second class citizens, they don't generate news. So that's one, a frivolity uh, in relation to evil. The, the second one is like people thinking at least something has been done. So people just get very easy with that, saying, oh, at least we have this little bit of effort, so 
we should not criticize it, we should stick to it. There's something being done, even though that something is just, you know, comes bits of nothing. And the third one is, is like, here nothing ever happens. And to finish with that, there, there is a book, very well known by everyone, like 100 Years of Solitude. And they talk about the killing of thousands of people um, in a strike in the Pacific side of the country. Uh, and they were, they were striking against a banana, banana plantation company. They were killed and then they were removed in trains. And then it turned into a myth. Now it's a myth of Colombia, of the history of Colombia. And then you see last year, we found out a mass grave with 2,000 bodies. And now they are saying there are only 300 in there. And it's becoming another myth, all this idea of trucks coming and removing the bodies. And then the imaginary of the people just goes around me and people inside the whole issue by, by looking at myths. So I, I think those are the responses of the majority, unfortunately. I just want to